You're listening to the Kelly Green Hour for the Always Next Year Podcast Studio Network. You can find the team on our Twitter, at ANY Podcast, or visit us on our website, www.alwaysnextyearpodcast.com. And now, to bring us in, the Jack Dolls. That son of a bitch again. He cracked open a rib or two. He beat me so they through and through. And so she over my unconscious frame. I want me healthy sheriff fights. Well, lucky son still have me life since Mickey Flynn beat me dumb and lame. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Kelly Green Hour here on the Always Next Year podcast. I'm your host, LJ Harrell, and joining me today, we're going back to the old days, the host of Backyard Beers and Football, Shane Mead. Shane, how you doing today? Good, man. It's good to be back. Um, it is it is really taking it back. I, I don't think we've done an Eagles pod together in probably over a year at this point. It has been a while. Yeah, it's good to be back, man. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Uh Connor is on vacation this week, so hopefully he's uh, enjoying himself up in the uh, greater north. Wherever, I forget where he is. Where is he going? I can't he, remember. He, he t- just told me. Yeah, he told me on whenever we did our People's Take segment on, on Saturday or whatever it was, he told me. And I can't remember either. Yeah, me either. Terrible memories we have over here. Either that or we obviously don't care about you, Connor. <laughs> Sorry, pal. I uh, don't believe him, Connor. Um, no, nah, we love you. <laughs> all right, so um, we were hoping that this would be a victory <laughs> hour the victory green hour but it's not as the philadelphia eagles fell to the atlanta falcons 24 to 20 in a game that let's be real the eagles probably should have been blown out but they also could have won if they had their weapons it was a weird game very weird yeah it was it was super strange week twos are just not kind uh, in the doug peterson era um it's three years in a row now they, they've they've won so They've won all four of the home or all four of their season openers, yep. and lost three of the four. Three of the four in week two, uh, yeah. in the last three, yeah. Today. Yeah, uh, 2017 was on the road in Kansas City, mm-hmm. uh, a game that they almost won too. They did almost win. It was another weird game. Exactly, a game they didn't run the ball. Yep. Like Lagaret came out and was like, oh, "I think, <laughs> well, you know, he was respectful about it. Said we needed to run the ball, and what did they do? Run the ball down down the Chargers' throats and." The rest, as we would say, is history back in 2017. So Certainly is. I would, love, I would love a repeat of that. But uh, quickly, um, the game started off really slow. Um, yeah. We're going to get into the Eagles' slow start because that, something needs to change there. I don't know how they're going to find a way to change it, but we'll discuss that. Um, the Eagles and Falcons traded off field goals first. Bryant with a 50-yarder in the first quarter and Elliott with a 34-yarder, which um, whenever he kicks those short field goals, I have uh, no confidence. <laughs> but he's been good so far this year. Um, and then, as we were getting into the latter portions of the second quarter, Calvin Ridley burning Ronald Darby for a 34-yard touchdown. Ronald Darby did not have his best game. As, yes, he had an interception, but he did not have his best that game. That was due to the Eagles. blitz. That was. And that, we got to give credit where credit's due. Jim Schwartz yeah, for finally, sure. you know, I, I don't know why he did it, but I'm glad he did it. Because yeah. it worked up, up, up until that last play, obviously. It's a high-risk, high-reward thing. You know, mm-hmm. Obviously, he doesn't want to, to bring that much pressure because you leave yourself exposed for, obviously, the eventual play that won the football game for the, for the Atlanta Falcons. You know, But at a certain point, with the way that offense was rolling in the first half and just couldn't get anything going, I, I think Jim Schwartz understood at this point, we may need to give them field position and give them a shot at even three points. I also think that... He doesn't like to blitz because he doesn't trust his corners on the outside. If you get a Jalen Ramsey, <laughs> and you get, obviously him being one of the best, if not the best corners in football, you, he can shut down half the field, and you can bring more design blitzes and do different things up front. And, you know, it doesn't help when you're not getting any pressure from the front four. It also doesn't help when your top two of your top three defensive tackles are out because mm-hmm. of broken foot. Uh, with What's with feet in Philadelphia, man? Corey Dickerson gone now. It's, it's absurd. It, and, you know, when it comes to the Eagles, I don't know if it's the medical staff, but they've had an absurd number of injuries the last three years. Soft tissue stuff has been insane. You know, and, and like that's what ends up, I think, anyway, when you have that kind of, you know, kind of a nag type of injury and you have to play through it or you feel the need to play through it. Like, 
you leave yourself susceptible so badly to an actual, actual injury that's going to keep you out for an extended period of time. So not good, man. Not, not good. Not good at all. All right, so continuing on, the, the Eagles were able to get a field goal as time expired to make it 10-6. Falcons at the half. Coming out of the break, the Eagles get the ball back. They have some momentum, and Corey Clement fumbles the ball. <laughs> that was possibly one of the plays of the game because you give the Falcons the ball inside their own 25-yard line or whatever it was, and then Julio Jones is finally able to score a touchdown against the Eagles. Yep. Um, it, for, um, you know, Darby did not cover that bad, but when you're asking a corner to cover possibly the best corner, uh, best wide receiver in the game for 7 to 10 seconds, he's going to beat you. It, it's and especially a quarter or a, a wide receiver who has now had what seven eight years with the same quarterback, you know, in only two different offensive systems. Like at a certain point, there's a feel there that goes along with that and a trust. They've had a couple. Is cause, it three? Because they had, had Dirk Cutter, then they went to Shanahan, Sh- then yeah. they went to Sarkeesian. I forgot about Sarkeesian, and now it's back to Cutter. Yeah. So, but yeah, you know, I, I, one thing I do want to mention about Matt Ryan. For somebody who's had as great of talent as he has on the outside, he's a very mediocre quarterback. Yeah, he puts up the numbers, but when you can throw out a, a, um, a screen out to Julio and he can go 50 yards, that'll help your numbers a little bit. <laughs> certainly will. It certainly will. He's, I don't know, I, I'm i a fan. Like, I, I would trust him in, in, you know, I would trust him, but I know we're different there. We, we, we are. <laughs> Look, he, he's he's a quality quarterback. I just don't think he's. Yeah, he's not, like a, he's not a he's top not a five, superstar. top eight quarterback, but he's a top third of the league in terms I of who mean, I would it, trust. It's not hard. There are some bad quarterbacks. There are some really bad quarterbacks. There's some bad quarterbacks. All right, so um, uh, towards the end of the third quarter, the Eagles were able to score after Nelson Aguilar caught a four-yard touchdown pass from Carson Wentz. Then the Eagles went for two, and we found out uh, the bogus rule. that That's absurd. The circumstances behind this rule, if you're at midfield and you're sliding, yes, you're giving yourself up. But it's a two-point conversion, and you're diving into the end zone. You have to think of the circumstances behind the play and and the time of game. What happens if he handed that ball off to Jordan Howard and he dives in? He's not giving himself up. Get the hell out of here. It's a terrible, terrible rule. Oh, it's an awful rule. It's just they they need to reword that in in order to make that. Because when you have a quarterback like a Ben Roethlisberger who is dead, uh, if you have a quarterback like Carson Wentz at the goal line, Russell Wilson, like these guys are and will be a running threat inside that five and three yard line. They just are. And if they got to go head first to make something happen, which by the way, 100% threw up in my mouth because he did the same damn thing that uh, ended life, or so we thought, in the 2017 season. I rem- that was the last time I was on with you, I think. Was it really the LA game? I think it was after that. It, it was the man I, mean, I hope to su- God. We did a Super Bowl one. Well, we did do a Super Bowl show together. Well, we did that with everyone, but this is the first time it has been like since. Our very very beginning start here, but um, but yeah, he's he's a runner at that point. That's a terribly terribly constructed rule. You know it's bad when Chris Collinsworth is defending the Eagles. He 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 was perplexed at the rule too. And oh yeah, Doug Peterson. You know after he was speaking with the media, he said yeah it's a rule and kind of brushed it aside. But you you have to think of the, as I mentioned the circumstances of the game. Mm-hmm. You're not giving yourself up going into the end zone. You're trying to get two <laughs> points. Right. Let's be real. <laughs> Um, so and then as we got um, the fourth quarter, kind of went back and forth. Uh, nobody scoring. And then the Eagles took the lead. Carson Wentz with one of the greatest plays I've ever seen by a quarterback. He's being tackled, falling down, and nobody should make this throw. He threw the ball about, what, 15, 20 yards to Mac Hollins? Yeah. How the heck he, A, didn't get his knee didn't hit the ground, B, how he had enough arm strength to get it to him, and C, why he even made the play is beyond me, but I'm... These are the type of plays that you get with Carson Wentz. There's a lot of yin and yang with him. You know, he he's going to have a bad first half, but then he's going to do something in the second half and give you the lead. That's the X factor with him, you know, and I think the thing that's most encouraging about that is, you know, first two seasons Carson probably pulls a lot of those escape plays down and his eyes are not downfield. We've seen that kind of evolution since I would say probably the last three or four games he was healthy in 2017 and then while he was on the field last year obviously having to play with a, a knee that's now reconstructed um you change a little bit but his eyes are constantly downfield and he's he's got such a better sense of ball security at this point when moving around in, in a pocket that's collapsing around him and he's just got that 
that just innate ability to make something out of absolutely nothing that we see with so few quarterbacks. Very Russell Wilson esque. It reminded me of the 2017 Seattle game when he's running to the sideline. It was the same getting thing. Hit and throwing it 50 yards downfield to Nelson Aguilar. Yeah. Like. And Nelson trucking someone to get out of bounds for two more yards. I loved it. <laughs> but, but like you don't act, a quarter. Everybody talks about okay. Carson plays reckless. He doesn't play reckless. He does not play reckless. This is him. him. This is him playing. Do you want a quarterback that's going to be a statue in the pocket and get hit all the time? Because Nick Foles got hurt hit standing in the, in the pocket. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's arguably the most dangerous place to be on a football field. It's a collapsing pocket with the largest humans on the football field falling into, one, an already reconstructed knee, and two, he's had a back injury. Like These are things that you don't need to happen. Chances are if he's moving and escaping around in the pocket, so long as he is controlling himself in a way that we saw yesterday or two days ago now, um, I'm, that's safer to me than just scrambling to an outside, taking an unnecessary hit, or standing the hell still and breaking a collarbone and being out until week 11, Nick Foles, who's never stayed healthy ever. I love you, man. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the Super Bowl. But uh, We appreciate you. Send J- uh, Jalen Ramsey our way. <laughs> 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 All right, so a minute later uh, was the biggest play of the game, which um, well, yeah, is the biggest yeah. play of the game. It was third, was it third down or fourth? I don't remember. But I think it was fourth and two, was fourth wasn't it? was fourth and three. Fourth and three. And... They, the Eagles checked into a blitz. Matt Ryan checked into a screen. Uh, you got to give Matt, uh, Jake Matthews a ton of credit for getting on the outside, getting to the cornerback. Uh, give Sanu a ton of credit for blocking uh, Dar- Darby in the back. Yeah, in the back. And give Julio Jones a ton of credit for being the man child that he is because, <laughs> you know, he, he used his speed. And that, it, was, it was a great play call by, by the Falcons. Um, again, I'm not mad at Schwartz for blitzing. You have to get pressure on the quarterback. We saw what happened in the game. They got pressure. Three Sydney, interceptions. Sidney Jones had an interception. Darby had an interception. Nate Gary had an interception. Nate Gary is an idiot, by the way, trying yeah, to run out the end zone right there. What a moron. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they caught... Didn't they throw a flag, too, for like on that play? I thought they... They did, but it was on Atlanta. It was, it was, was it, uh, okay, offensive I thought holding. it was like a, a holding on the Eagles, and they had to start at the 10 or whatever. Um, okay, so then the Eagles get the ball back. And this is where, look, Carson Wentz is getting paid a lot of money. And the, if there's one thing about Carson that we want to see is winning close games. Yeah. He has, in 2017, it was a bunch of blowouts. Like, he didn't really have to win close games. Well, he never, they played with a freaking lead exactly. in 2017. Exactly. This is something that they haven't done in two years now. And, and, it's, and it doesn't just go on Carson. It belongs to Doug Peterson. Mm-hmm. Doug Peterson needs to step up his game. And, you know. Carson did what we wanted him to do. He led the team down the field. Yeah. Nelson Aguilar. <laughs> he uh, alligator armed it. He said he lost the ball in the lights, but bro, you catch that ball, you're you're, you're scoring. Mm-hmm. It's a touchdown. Your team's up 27-24. And you know I, So did you see the close up, by the way, on uh on the camera shot on his on his face at that point? Now I still haven't seen it. Where it was, um, like, I only saw his face. So this could literally be at any point in his career ever in an Eagles helmet. Um, like, that's how close it was, the the short video that I did see. Um, but, like, you, you do, do see Glare come right across that. And you see him kind of wince down and just kind of out, you know, put his arms out. I don't know where or when this actually took place. Or if Nelson Aguilar has a fantastic PR man, <laughs> but uh, I have reason to suspect that he is not lying and that he did, in fact, lose that ball in the lights. But, yeah, man, you got to catch that football. You do. And you give him a ton of credit, too, because the very next play, how Atlanta allowed him to get behind them twice. That was like, that was embarrassing. That's why I say if the Eagles are healthy, the Eagles win that game easy. I agree. Like, they did that without Deshaun, so you didn't have a speed threat, without Jeffrey, who's your number one receiver, Without Goddard, who's, and you only had dressed two tight ends, and you, so you couldn't play two tight end sets or run the football. And we knew that they were this was going to be a heavy twelve uh, package set for this because team of what the today. Did. Exactly right. You were counting on Goddard to be on the football field, and then we were sitting there watching the game together before a game. You sat there, you put your phone down, you were like, "Jesus Christ!" Like Goddard's walking back to to the locker room right now. I'm like, "Game hasn't even started yet." The hell's what do you mean? He's got to take a poop. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Um, but uh, that that had to have changed things dramatically, and I'm willing to give Doug a pass on that that first half, trying to figure things out without three 
really integral pieces to, well, to that scheme. So am I, because you go, you practice all week, you have all three guys, this is the game plan that you're implementing for this game, and then you get out to warm-ups and stretch, and... Three guys are dead. Three guys are done. Now, my question is, did Miami, or Miami, did Atlanta play some gamesmanship? Why was the roof open? Apparently, there, I was like, so listening to WIP all week f- from fans that were there, they said it was hot. There was no air conditioning on in the in the building. No but way. Atlanta is used to that weather, and I know it's not eight nine o'clock at night, but it's a different swampiness there. They've and they've had the hottest summer or whatever, like in their recorded history. I don't understand why that building, the, the roof was open. Apparently, NBC wanted it open. Do you remember watching the game NBC even sh- ever showing that? Never. So, I, I mean, do you think? Um, obviously, it's a comp- conspiracy theory. Obviously, it's beyond the whatever the game's passed. But Atlanta was going to do anything they could to beat the Eagles because you know they they hate us. They do because they can't beat us. <laughs> they hate us because they ain't us. <laughs> they hate us because they ain't us. Their Twitter account is absurd, by the way. Oh yeah. Oh, and okay, so. I, I, you saw them celebrating? That, that the was celebration was dumb as hell. That it was the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Their, Congratulations. Yeah, right? Now, See you not in the playoffs. Well, Drew Brees is out for six weeks, so that changes things in that division. But, yeah, I mean, if the Eagles have to go back to Atlanta, they can, they can beat them. C- come January, they got to go back to Atlanta, they can beat them. All yeah, right. I mean, I don't, I don't fear Atlanta. Hey. I also don't fear Atlanta anymore. Because Jim Schwartz did figure out what he needed to do against that. Because we talked about it just, I, I mean, off air, but just walking around the house, you know, talking about they're going to have a field day, those receivers out there against our secondary. He I, put together a scheme. I mean, it was an adjustment that he made throughout the game, you know, to put together a scheme to help the skill set of his players. Like, that was very Belichick esque. That was recognizing Darby. Darby's getting beat. You can't keep him on the outside. We're going to have to rotate him in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Letting Sydney and letting Douglas play up, blitzing more, helping these guys out, and finding some creativity that his defensive schemes very, very much so lack. I, I was impressed, and I don't fear Atlanta for that reason. Oh going yeah, forward. and you got to you have. I mentioned you got to give Schwartz credit credit where it's due because we going into the game we're like after what Washington's after what Terry McLaurin did to us. Julio man, Julio's gonna have a big day. Mm-hmm. But again, the adjustments that were made now. He made proper adjustments, maybe went a little too far, but hey, it happens. Offensively, why, did, in your opinion, why does it take so long for Carson Wentz, Doug Peterson, and this offense to get going? Again, I, I think that this particular week is, and I feel like we could have an excuse like this every single week, but I mean, come on now. When you prepare an entire week with, you know, assuming that your top two outside receiving threats are going to be available for 60 plus plays when you're assuming that your 12 package is going to be the major driving force in both your run and pass game there what you're doing and your second tight end can't go that changes everything now you can't run the ball as effectively as you planned you know and and hit that run we've we know it does. It helps set up Carson. It helps set up the rhythm of those drives. We saw them open up the second half with it last week, uh, or well, now two weeks ago now, uh, in the opener against Washington. Like it was smash mouth football, and that opened up the outside. This week, there was nothing they could do. I get it this week, but it happened week one. It did happen Which, week one. Again, I associate that that being their preseason. Like, yes. Now you're coming into a week where. You're going up against the Detroit team, which me and Connor are going to get into that later in this week, and I know you and Rob will. Mm-hmm. But you know, oh, we talk about nothing <laughs> on our show. Back here, beers and football for you guys who don't listen to that segment yet. If you want football, like <laughs> just listen to Kelly Green Hour. <laughs> it's no. a bunch of overreacting to tweets and our WhatsApp messages and an advice column, and then Rob drinks beer. <laughs> So yeah, well, I'm keep, sure you'll give an. Ex, you'll, I'm sure you'll give a prediction. <laughs> we do give predictions, <laughs> but no. But um, like you're going up against a team in Detroit coming in this week that is coming off a big win against the. the, the I keep saying San Diego, the Los Angeles Chargers. We do too. <laughs> that held a, a Phillips River a Philip Rivers led offense to ten points. They were at home, um, you know, and again they have a head coach in Patricia who got embarrassed in the Super Bowl by the Eagles two years ago, like. And you're not going to have Deshaun Jackson, who's out two weeks. You might not have Alshon Jeffrey. You know, we're, this is a 2016 type of receiver court, receiving course that we have. If the, if if we and they fought, 
I don't know why Doug and them, they only went with two tight ends on the active roster. They, they brought Alex Ellis up, so they're going to at least have two, which, you know. Doesn't sound good for it, Goddard. Yeah, exactly. But they can at least have another one. Ertz played every offensive snap. Like, I can understand an offensive lineman doing that, you know. Yeah. I can understand me. Um, um, Malcolm Jenkins, Jenkins does it all the time. Nigel Bradham does it all the time. But you have Ertz who's running a bunch of routes, like downfield and block. Like that gets tiresome after a while. Oh yeah. So he he deserves a ton of credit um, for for how. But he also needs to go ten ten and a half yards and not nine and a half yards <laughs> because that's another big play. You get that first down, you have it for more, four more opportunities to score a touchdown and win the game. Yep. Yeah, that was inexcusable. Rob's. Uh, freak out in the in our amyp chat was welcomed we'll get into that on my show but yeah you got to know where the lines you know, the sticks are especially for somebody to. that can't break tackle that's what i'm saying like if you know that you're soft as hell like you get breathed on you're like gotta go down that's it so, gotta get home my lady uh, julie Ertz, man he, uh, hey girl <laughs> right if you're listening <laughs> do something with your husband get him some t- she's the she's she's got the the muscle in the relationship <laughs> <laughs> she do all right, so we know that Doug is really good with his halftime adjustments. Mm-hmm. He did an outstanding job week one against Washington. And, you know, if Corey Clement doesn't fumble the ball, maybe they go down and score right away. And, and that changes the entire complexion of the game. But what can he do? What can Carson do? Again, without, you know, harping on you're missing three of your top five weapons, without harping on that, what, what can they do to get the offense going quicker instead of waiting for these second half adjustments? So this is something that confuses the hell out of me because for for as long as because again Jim Schwartz whole bend don't break is his the style he wants to play his defense is almost always on the field for eight ten twelve fifteen freaking plays just to let up a field goal maybe you know or or, or whatever if you come out the shoot and, and you're Carson and you're Doug and you're, you're that offense and you have one two just three and out drives or, or you know, maybe you get one first down in those two drives. You got a hell of a lot of time on a sideline to go be Sean McVay and sit your ass on a cooler and figure out something offensively that may, in fact, work. If it doesn't work immediately for you at a certain point, do something different. Do something different. You have the time to adjust in game. Plus, there's 87 commercials in the NFL. That's true. And again, he he, he even mentioned like if if you would have saw his play sheet, I was crap ton of stuff. Was crossed out because you have to. Because you mean, what is JJ Arthago Whiteside going to run? What is Mac Holland going to run? They're not running. Yeah, they got like down th- field. Yeah, they've like a three tree route or not, a three route they're, tree. They're not running the nine route like Deshaun. Yeah. Um. You know, and that changes the entire complaint. When you have a Deshaun Jackson, it happened when when we faced him when he was with Washington and Tampa Bay. When you have to respect that speed, it opens up other parts of the field. Mm-hmm. You saw Atlanta was able to play five, six, seven guys up up close because who's going to burn them deep? No one. Well, Nelson Aguilar. Nelson got twice. behind him twice. <laughs> I still can't believe Atlanta allowed that to happen. But like, but, but seriously, who's going to go off for a fifty-yard touchdown? Yeah, it's not happening. The only other, the only other ch- chance you have a, a, a quote unquote deep touchdown is a wheel route. Yeah, you know, that's about and they, it. And they played Darren Sproles like five snaps. He got, he touched the ball twice. I honestly I didn't realize he played. Like I'm sitting here trying to think back in my head at, at a meaningful snap that he had. I mean, and they weren't like he. We, we always talk about how Doug loves Darren Sproles, but this would have been the week, not week one, this would have been the week for him to, apparently though. If, he was going to be the receiver yeah, if, if Nelson, anyone else got hurt. If, if Nelson got hurt, the third receiver is Darren Sproles. Yeah, which is hilarious. Oh. Everyone wants a 5-3 receiver. Oh my God. That's how bad it got for the Eagles. Oh my God. It, and it's so crazy that, you know, the, the one thing that can derail the Eagles season are injuries, and it happened in one half. Yep. Oh, you said it. They don't play in domes, man. Oh, the, the New Orleans last year, they lost the entire secondary, mm-hmm. plus some. And, and that was the first New Orleans game. First the playoff no, game. And then playoff in the playoff game, game Brandon, Co- Brooks. Brandon Brooks tore his Achilles. Cox got hurt. Yep. If the Eagles would have won that game, they would have been without Brooks, Cox, uh, Bradham. Like, they would have been. I don't like We, we talk about, oh, they would have went to the Super Bowl. But you have I to think know. about. Who was going to play that game? I don't know. <laughs> like, seriously, they would have had to go to L.A. with Tim Jernigan and, you know, Trayvon Hester. Like <laughs> Trayvon and, Hester's finger. Hall of Fame. Love you, buddy. He's on, he's on the practice squad. They might have to bring him up with uh, 
Journeyman. Trayvon Hester's in Washington, isn't he? Was that Hester or was that um? Uh, who was the other? There's another defensive tackle. I think it's Hester. Is it Hester or? I think it's Hester. Who the heck did we we trade it a D tackle for Rudy Ford to Arizona and then Arizona cut him and we brought him back on the practice squad? Why did I think that was Trayvon Hester? I don't know. Anyway, um, they're gonna have to figure something out because they are missing a bunch of people. Yeah. Um, yeah, it does. It doesn't look good, and it doesn't help that after the Detroit game on Sunday, four days later four they're days. in Green Bay. So yeah, thanks Phillies for making the playoffs. <laughs> well, it's not this part of the schedule. That's the that's the three road games in a row. Doesn't that start the three road games? No, because they get the Jets at home the week after. Jets then three weeks. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, they got to go. Well, still thanks Minnesota, Philadelphia, for- Minnesota. Dallas and Buffalo, or Minnesota, Buffalo, and Dallas. It's something like that where, you know, the NFL was like, hey, the Phillies are going to be good. They got Bryce Harper, so we got to give the Eagles, you know, we don't want a hectic, uh, the hectic Philadelphia sports center, you know, to to be going crazy. So we're going to give the, the Eagles three road games, a lot of Phillies to have it. <laughs> and then Matt Clentine forgot to get a pitcher. <laughs> That's like, he forgot to do anything. And then the <laughs> fail was like, eh. If we don't, we don't. You're an asshole. You can listen this to is not a Phillies podcast. You can, you can listen to Incap. We trust if uh, you want to get Shane's take on that. Which every episode for the last month has started out as I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> like, can you, you imagine want... being a listener being like, well, all right, I guess I'll turn this off. <laughs> like, then I just talk to myself for 45 minutes. It's I mean, you, awful. You only have what 14 games left to do it. Yeah. You know what's going to happen though. Like, before. I already said it. I already said it. They're going to go on a run, and they're going to need to take at least two of three from Miami, and they're going to get look. fucking swept. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, it's exactly how it's working so out. So that's the Phillies talk here on Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, move on to better things. All right, so well, the Eagles, Eagles did football. just lose them. So still better. Than right, so before we get to, to the next segment, uh, I want to remind everybody to rate and review our podcast. Uh, you can review, rate and review the Kelly Green Hour. Base. Why keep forgetting your, your guy's name? Your backyard beers thank and you, football. Thank you, thank you. Backyard beers and football. Uh, yeah. Kelly Green Hour. Uh, Crossing Borders. Uh, People's Take. Listen to everything, review, rate, review it, follow us on Twitter at NY Podcast is the Always Next Year Podcast. I'm at LJ Harrell 54. Shane's at Shane. Shane underscore Mead. And Connor's at Connor 10. That's Connor T E N. Uh, so give us all a follow. I'm almost at 100, so I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Are you shitting me? I, I guess you don't really use social media. I don't like I, I only use it to get my updates. All right, so right, that's how I found out that, you know, uh, Jalen Ramsey's on the. The block, which we are going to talk about in a little bit. Okay, so. Hell yeah, we are. You're. Let's finish off this Falcons game. I, I can't deal with it anymore. All right. Uh, player of the game and play of the game. Who is it for you? Uh, play of the game is obviously the one that, you know, that sealed the deal uh, ultimately for, for Atlanta. Um, it was a really, really good pre snap read there uh, by, uh, by Matt Ryan. Top third quarterback in, in football. Just reminding people. Doesn't take much. Really doesn't. Um, <laughs> but uh, really nice recognition there. Really nice illegal block uh, by Sanu. Uh, and then just straight jets by a uh, guy who's just He's not so human. Um, but that was play of the game. Uh, player of the game, uh, I'm going to say, is Calvin Ridley instead of uh, instead of two touchdown. Bama Julio. boys. The Bama boys, man. It went off, man. They they went off, uh, rolling tide in Atlanta, and uh, um, they got another Bama receiver coming out next year who might be better than Calvin Ridley. I'm not going to put him in Julio Jones. You uh, can't; it's illegal. But Jerry Judy is ridiculous. Apparently, we have to watch more roll tide football. Oh, I watch all he. Okay, so you know how you always talk. I, I know we should, but you know how you always talk when you watch people run routes and then they stop and you're like, "How is his knee not all the way across the field?" That's Jerry Judy when he runs. He stops on a dime like uh, Reggie Bush did against Fresno State. Ew. But he <laughs> does that on the regular. Like his and, – and the three receivers for Bama are so fast it's not even fair, except when they face Clemson apparently. But, um, yeah, Jerry Judy, uh, Devontae, or, yeah, Devontae Smith, and uh, I can't remember the third one because he's also really good too. But they have uh, – it helps, you know, that that helps too. That's going to make two of the number one overall pick by the Miami Dolphins this year. Tua still stinks. He throws that thing so damn Better weird. Better than Ellinger. It's not going to get a well, Ellinger's not a quarterback. He would be if they let him. He can beat He's got LSU. a hell of an arm. He's just Tua beats not a quarterback. LSU. Just saying. And, yeah, and look at be, what's around. We can't talk about college Maryland. football right now. <laughs> uh, well, 
I have to retire from this show and all shows here at AMYP <laughs> because Maryland makes me break things in my own home. All right, so my <laughs> my my play of the game <laughs> playing dirty. <laughs> my my play of the game is um, the Corey Clement fumble at the start of the third quarter. It, obviously, it's that Julio play because it won the game. But if Corey Clement doesn't fumble the football, the Falcons don't get the ball inside the 30, 25, whatever yard line it was. I mean, it, it, even if the Eagles don't score, you're changing field position. And the Eagles had all the momentum mm-hmm. for the most part. So that that's my play of the game. Player of the game, man. Razul. I'm not going with an Eagle for player of the game. <laughs> they lost. Oh, my goat of the game, though? Isaac Sayamalu got embarrassed the entire game. <laughs> He was statistically ranked in, in PFF one of the worst games ever. Ever, ever by an offensive <laughs> lineman. Right? I saw that tweet, and I was like, damn, I knew it was bad. But, like, that bad? It, Isaac Samalu. It, oh, it was ridiculous. Vomit-worthy. Um, vomit-worthy, that's a good, a good way to put it. Very good way to put it. I, I don't get it. I, it. How they choose him over Wisniewski. Now, Wisniewski's not the best, but he is serviceable. He doesn't get bullied. JP didn't want to play with him. I wouldn't want we to saw play. that whole thing last year. I know, but... Uh, also, Wiz didn't help himself out by not being able to play center. No, that's true. But So, okay, if you're the Eagles, obviously you'd have to have Jeffrey Lurie go up to Jason Peters. Would you ask him to move to guard and let Dillard start at left tackle? Um, no. I think he, I think he could, but I, if it were me... I'd, I'd keep JP on the outside. Uh, there's a trust factor for Carson there. You know, obviously he's been off the field a lot, but um, but no. If it was a, one of the the two of them go sliding into the guard spot, I'd I'd just let Dillard do it. Um, what know, about Vi- Vitae was playing right guard. Vitae was playing the other side, yeah, yeah, because we thought Brandon Brooks. Yeah, so he was playing right. I mean, he should be able to switch to left guard. Do you think? Maybe not. Yeah, yeah, he he should in theory. I do like the versatility of Vitae being able to play literally four of the five line positions, though. Uh, you know, so I like him being that first. Like if I'm Jeff, off. if I'm Jeff Stoutland, I I oh, when I turn that tape on, every play somebody's getting ripped. When they're watching, that film, was a bad game. That was it was awful. Yeah, that was, and we don't see a lot of those from this Eagles line, even when they have replacement level people in there, something like a Samalo or something like a Halapolavate. Halapulavati Vaitai. Halapulavati Vaitai. I can't do it. Can you spell it? Uh, no, I can't spell it, man. I can hardly spell my own name. That's why I'm on a podcast. Shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that was a, that was an ugly performance. You know, Carson should never, ever, ever be hit. What was twelve times he got hit? Hit a lot. I think at half he was er, he in the third corner. He's he still may have honestly. Like we, you, he may end up on a report at some point. Um, you saw that hit that when he, he the was, first hit. He was full, fully extended, exposed. exposed, and Deion Jones helmet right to the upper rib mm. cage. Yeah, that was a mess. Um, and he was wincing on and off. Now again, I was an athlete too. Anytime I screwed up on the field, Were you an athlete? No, I'm kidding. You know, <laughs> um, Madden and such. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, even playing rec league stuff, like it doesn't really matter if you if you get hit by a pitch or something in baseball, and then you make an error. Like if I get hit in my foot, and then I make an error. On a line drive at my face, I immediately look down at my foot and I'm like, man, if I if I could have moved that one step for the line drive. So this is probably harsh, but I, that's what I thought when um, Howard hit that ground out back in 2000. I thought so too. I thought I it was, was a like, fake injury. That's not real. <laughs> I was like, that ain't real. We all thought it. It's all right. <laughs> I thought it was fake. <laughs> Sorry, uh, big piece. We love you here at AMYP. Thank Pretty you for everything much. you did for two and a half years. Um, Five years. He had a five-year stretch. That five-year stretch was ridiculous, though. It was. He changed the game. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I, I, I can never quite tell with NFL players, like, especially quarterbacks, you get hit a little bit, and then suddenly you make a bad decision with the football, and then it wasn't a decision. Like, I, I usually get five more yards on that deep ball. So Wentz made some of well, the worst throws I've ever seen him make in his career, in his four-year, three-plus-year career. Like, yeah. his... He, I don't know if he's ever had a 6.1 QB rating at any point in a game. And that was his first half QB rating. Mm-hmm. It was really bad. Again, putting the not having three of your top four or five receivers in, you know, it doesn't help. That's where, again. And your line was Swiss cheese. Yeah, and you don't have any running game. 
what is going on with the running game, by the way? Like, Miles Sanders, I expected a lot out of him. They need to give the ball to Jordan, Jordan Howard more. Yes, they do. He moves piles. Yep. And it, I don't know why they don't run the football. Again, this is just like week two in 2017 against Kansas yep. City. They're going to come out against Detroit and probably run the ball. Probably. Because, well, they're probably going to be forced to because they won't have any receivers. It's true. <laughs> but they'll have 1995 Zach, era football. They'll have uh, Zach Ertz and Nelson Aguilar, and that's about it. Um, speaking of injuries, though, how concerning is this? It's in, it's Malik bad. Jackson out for the year. Jernigan's out four to six weeks. Al, um, Deshaun's out one to two weeks. Alshon could be missing a couple games. It, it's not looking good. Yeah, this is... Excuse the yawn on a podcast. Um, but uh, if you're not concerned, I, please tell me why. I, I mean, we talk so much about the depth of, of our offense and our skill pieces and... Here we are with half of our skill pieces underperforming. The other half are dead. Like, how can you not be concerned at that point? You're putting so much pressure on a quarterback who's in year one of his new extension, um, technically, right? Technically next next year, but theoretically, whatever. First year back from another injury. Um, And you need to have your pieces there to help them, and they're not. And then when your entire defensive scheme is predicated on your front four being able to get to the quarterback and two of your most important pieces inside on that line are dead, I'm sorry. So I'm concerned. We've given Howie a lot of praise. He missed a boat on Jadavion Clowney. You should have known that you're going to need – if Schwartz doesn't want to blitz, you should have known that you're going to need – An elite edge. An elite – Edge. Brandon Graham is is good, but he's a run stuffer. He's not a get after the quarterback. You saw he's made a couple big plays on running plays. Mm-hmm. That's what he does. Derek Barnett, we don't know what he does. You I know? don't know. I'm not as low on him as you are. I like him. I like the kid a lot, and he has a very very high motor. Um, he's just an idiot. Like he's one he's of the so dumbest people watch. I've ever watched on the line. Um, but uh, but hopefully the more more with that you know as he's on the football field and healthy, he starts feeling that rhythm out a little bit better and he's not so antsy to jump that that snap count. But and then you think about he's not Jadavion and you think about the the backups we have, Vinny Curry, Josh Sweat, Vinny Curry run guy, Josh Sweat I love but he just can't stay healthy. Deshaun Hall, Deshaun they, Hall they don't inactive active twice. Yeah, I would rather Deshaun Hall. He was the MVP of the preseason. Now yes, it is it's preseason. the preseason. I get that. But he's a former third round pick. Like, and he played. He played with Miles Garrett at Texas A and M. Like, put him out there to see what he can do. We need somebody to get pressure. We have got zero pressure. We have two sacks. One by Tim Jernigan. The other by Andrew Sendejo. Uh, Fletcher Cox has a total of two tackles in two games. Like, this is not good. Yeah. The way we've been performing. Now, I want to let's let's take this to our last topic. Minka Fitzpatrick got traded for a first rounder and they swapped late-round picks to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I'm He's a Bama guy. Huge, I think he's really good. I would have much preferred him I, over Jalen. I, I, would, I, would I would have loved to have him. Jalen Ramsey, has. there's talk that he could get traded this week. If you're Howie, obviously you're looking. My, my fear with, my thing with Howie is he always looks for the right deal. He tries to win a deal. Like that's why he's been able to bamboozle like the Miami Dolphins like all the time. Because Tannenbaum, when he was there, was an idiot. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> um, I th- and I don't know if he'll be able to do that with uh, Tom Coughlin and and that and that regime. But if you're Howie, what are you offering up for um, Jalen if you are interested in getting him? See, I th- it's hard. Uh, obviously, the report came out that they want two mm, firsts. Yes, um, not get two firsts. And when you're the the Eagles or most contenders, that first round pick isn't great. It's really only good for that fifth year, and gotcha. that's about it. Um, you know, when again, when you're a team like us, when you're a team like the Chiefs, which Chiefs talk, by the way, shameless plug, another one to show that I'm on. Um, Eagles fan here, just also talk Chiefs football sometimes. Um, I mean, they are fun with our former head coach. They're they're very fun over there, um, and former franchise running back who never should have been traded. Thank you, Chip. Um, yeah, right, but. That's the thing that I struggle with because I feel like if we offer up a first like they're like they're going to want, we give them a first. Okay, fine. We're going to be the team that also needs to include here, take a name out of the hat from our secondary, from our cornerbacks, yeah. whomever you want. We'll take that and probably also need a, a mid. The only pick one there. I would, only corner I wouldn't trade is Avante. 
Uh, I would not trade Avante either, specifically for his actual proven versatility. We think Rizal Douglas can be versatile. He definitely can play the slot. Um, we assume he can play safety. I think he's probably still better suited for safety, unless you let him play Namdi Asama style and just play up on the line. I've been saying that for weeks now. I mean, I've um, always said that he's been a better, and Ray Dittinger says it too. He's a he's a be, he would make a better safety than a corner. He's not fast enough. To he play isn't ball. fast enough to, to be. Granted, the he did spot. play really well against Julio. He, and why did he play well against Julio? He was playing up. He damn right he was, which is not what Jim Schwartz wants to do. So it's hard. And not what you want to do against Julio. Because well, because if, if he, he does make that move and, and get gone. by you, that's it. Which, again, risk-reward. If I'm pretty sure he only had the one catch on him because uh, everything else was... Uh, all I know is before the 54-yarder, he had like 50 total. He had like 50 yards on four or five catches. Like He didn't do much of that. He had the four-yard touchdown on, on the short... But, that's because Matt Ryan had like 10 seconds, 7 mm-hmm. to 10 seconds. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. As yeah. a defensive back, yeah, there's just like nothing Dar- you can do. Obviously, Darby didn't have a great game, but like you can't ask Darby to cover Julio that long. No. Like he didn't, he he was held in check. You know, you, it's like you're not going to, you're not going to, what's the saying you, you say about you're not going to stop him, you're not going to contain him? Like that's what they were doing. I just sent that same message to my uh, pick em pool uh, with my, my family. Someone, I'm, so I'm in first place, short side story, and someone sent a message to the guy in second place, someone I've never even met. Um, and family. He's just like, yeah, well, I don't think this guy's family. I think he's friends of the family somewhere along the way. But, uh, but yeah, he's just like, we got to stop Shane Mead. And I'm like, you can only hope to contain me. <laughs> you can't stop me. Can't stop nothing. Oh, um, my Lord. But, uh, yeah, so uh, to, to get all the way, to circle all the way back and to sit here and say, um, I would – do whatever it took, um, but that does apply a lot of pressure to someone who is incredibly stubborn in Jim Schwartz to fit your talent a little better. I think one of the reasons the Patriots continue to be good, even with players who are probably wouldn't be quite as talented elsewhere. We saw in the one-year experiment in, what's his name, safety, Cokehead. Um, oh, um, Patrick Black, Chung. Yeah, Patrick Chung here. It didn't work. Goes back there. He's serviceable Wasn't enough. that with Chip, though? Uh, it was yeah, it was Chip and Billy Davis, but still, um, <laughs> that answers that question. I'm just saying. Um, but one of the reasons and one of the things that make them so great is they they fit their scheme to their personnel and they adapt when they need to. And that may be from week to week, it may be from season to season, it may be from player to player. Um, but they have the ability to do that. Jim Schwartz, up until last week, really has not, up until the Falcons game, has really not been a guy to deviate. Um, and he did that. And I think when you acquire a big name and a big personality in Jalen Ramsey, you have to be willing to sit there and at least for half the field say, you know what, we're going to leave him there. If He's going to do what he does. And if you look at the Eagles' schedule, Green Bay has Devontae Adams. Dallas has Amari Cooper. Patriots now have Antonio Brown. Um, there are a bunch of receivers. You're just going to not talk about Josh Gordon? He may be in oh. rehab again by that point. And, and well, AB may be in jail. Yeah, be. <laughs> but let's be real, Antonio Brown or Josh Gordon? Oh, 100%. Okay. That's, that's all that's, uh, I'm just saying, there are, are really good receivers on this Eagles schedule. I so would have loved Josh Gordon, by the way. <laughs> uh, I really, I mean, at the time, he would He would have been nice in an Eagles uniform. He would have mm-hmm. looked good in some Eagles green. He would have. Yes, sir. Um, all right, so I put out on Twitter the other day um, about, or I think it was, oh, it was yesterday, about Jalen Ramsey, how he, requ- how he requested a trade, and asked our fans to, if you were interested, what kind of package would you offer up? And some of the people, Darby in our first this year, all day, every single day. And that was from uh, at Blake Margo, Mar- I'm assuming. Um, yeah, Margot, Margo, I'm going to say Margo. Um, and then we had um, Brian Jenks said, whatever Jacksonville wants. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be too opposed. Uh, Woody McDonald said, Turnstile Darby. Mm, yeah. Uh, Dave uh, Maiden said, Darby in a second. And Ken Gilbert said, Keep Malcolm and trade the entire the entire rest of the secondary for him. <laughs> Which, if you think, like, if, if I'm, if I'm, I, I call up Jackson, I'll say, All right, we'll, get, we'll give you a first. We'll give you a conditional late rounder, whether it's fifth. And that's going to be con- on condition of A, we re sign him. And B, how far we make it in the playoffs, and I think that's fair. And the third, who do you want? I, I look. You know how much I love Sidney Jones. I think you can entice Jacksonville with Sidney because he's young enough, 
and he has a potential. Obviously, we don't know. Potential only means so much, but this is some, some guy that before his injury was, was rated, a top 10 was, pick. Was a top 10, top 15 pick. I think you can entice them with that. First, a conditional late round. A, I would do even. And, First, a conditional late round Sydney for Jalen and a late, a sixth round pick. Yeah. I see no issues with that. Yeah, and I think the biggest part of that is the fact that you'd be willing to move, you know, arguably the, the corner on your roster that has the most, as you said, potential. Um, I actually think that of the corners, the, the one who's going to end up having the best career is probably going to be Avante at this point. Um, but I do think That's if that. if he doesn't move to safety, which I think with. He may with McLeod next year um, going. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that there's, there's enough there with Sydney that in a better system that maybe allows him to play the way that is most conducive to his skill set, uh, maybe we see that top 10, top 15 talent shine. And you might see that down there. Yeah, because I still don't understand why they tried to, tried to make him a slot corner. He's not a slot corner. Like, and, and that's the one thing that bothered me. That's why he looked so bad. You know, he belongs on the outside. He's also more of an up in, I think, an up in your face type of 100%. guy. He got long arms, man. It, it just jam. He had that interception that was based off of pressure. Mm. Darby's mm-hmm. interception based off pressure. Jerry's interception based off pressure. Do we see a theme here? I think we should blitz more. <laughs> you think? All right. So I don't even know when we're going to be on it, uh, together again, but quickly Eagles, Detroit. What are your quick thoughts on the game? I know it's early in the week and you and Rob will. May get into it, and you say you don't talk football. But <laughs> we do talk football, by the way. <laughs> Me and uh, Connor and I this week will also get, do dive into it, give a scouting report on Detroit. But quickly, what would what would your quick scouting report be, and um, kind of some keys to the game that you're looking at? Uh, so the biggest thing for me is you got to identify what pieces you even have, and you need to work the hell out of that chemistry building throughout this week of practice. So. I would be feeding the hell out of Ortega Whiteside right now. Um, I, just like you, I would be scripting my all of my run packages specifically for Jordan Howard at this point. I, I think, look, there's a lot of talent that we have with, with Miles Sanders. There's a lot of intrigue, but he's still got a college back's mind. He's out there making too many moves. He's doing, he's doing a lot of the same stuff Shady did when he first got here, honestly. Um, and it's shit that you just can't risk right now. Um, we need to... Two, even two, three yards is a big damn deal right now um, on first and second down, and Jordan Howard gives you the best opportunity for that. The other thing that I 100% would do, and you mentioned it earlier, is that is probably a week for Sproles again. Um, you know, for, for some gadget type stuff, some screen stuff, that is the biggest thing for me. The healthiest part of your team right now is your offensive line. Get Use them it. out there moving. Mm-hmm. That's it. Get them pulling. Um, you know, like I said, work the screen game. Even the tight end screens to Zach Ertz. It's not a play I love, but um, you know, if run appropriately, you know, it's seven, eight yards almost every damn time. So, those are the types of things I would use from the offensive standpoint. On the defensive side, for me, um, I always fear Matt Stafford because he's such a, a guy who, like, what does it matter if you play like shit? What is you're in Detroit? You're never going to win. You throw 80 times a game. Like, just go out there and sling it. Do whatever you want. And that's that recklessness and the you're allowed to be reckless because you're in freaking Detroit. That scares me. Also, Galladay is pretty good. Um, and then Marvin Jones and so, TJ Hawkinson and Carrion Johnson. Yeah, so there's there's some threat there. Um, but on the defensive side, I, I want to continue to see the growth and maturation of Jim Schwartz and his ability to bend. As much as he asks his defense to bend and not break, I'd like him to bend and maybe not totally break. I don't want him to go out there and blitz 87 times if, the, if they're on the field 87 plays. But um, it would be fun. But we'd also possibly give up 14 touchdowns. Um, but I would just be creative and you know put some pressure on a guy who's very willing to just sling it. You may very well have another week where if blitzed appropriately and pressure's there... Matt Stafford's not going to take a sack. He's just going to chuck it. You may walk into three or four interceptions again. So those are my two takeaways and, from that. And teams aren't going to run the ball against us. Because, Why would you? Exactly. The teams don't even try it. Wish they did, but. <laughs> that would, it would be nice. But you're right. Get pressure on uh, somehow on Stafford. And final way, you, know, you, you also mentioned Kenny Galladay. He is really, I, I, I usually draft him in fantasy because he's so good. He is good. <clears throat> he's a good fantasy receiver. Um, but, yeah, it's going to come down to. Uh, Doug Peterson getting Wentz comfortable early. 
the Eagles are since 2000 and so from last year to this year, the Eagles are the lowest scoring team in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. They they've scored three points the entire year this year in the third quarter or first quarter. Excuse me, Th- or no zero. They didn't score on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure zero points. I lied. I lied. Zero points in the first quarter in the first two games. No, 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 no. You need to start faster. Um, or else it could be another game where you're going into the halftime losing in a game you shouldn't be losing. Personally, man, I, I think one of the biggest things that they need to do, they've, look, they, this is two weeks in a row now they gave, like, what, 11, 12 carries to Miles Sanders, who half the time is going backwards anyway. At a certain point, just tell all your receivers to go and tell Carson to throw it as far as he freaking can. Well, and out him by 30 yards, I don't give a damn. Just give them something to think yeah, about. It's a lot it's easier better. when you have Deshaun. <laughs> I don't care if they catch it. I, I, I'm honestly, I'm banging on them not catching. I don't give a damn. Just don't give the ball to Miles Sanders and go backwards two yards on first down. I'd rather you airmail a pass that makes them say, "Oh shit, he does have a cannon. He can, he he can stretch it out there." You know, just to pl- just put something of thought in there. We didn't see them go what more than eight nine yards downfield until Nelly decided to oops. And for, who, on, for what arms it? No. And then on fourth down, he caught that. But I, I still can't believe Atlanta let him get behind him twice. But it is. It's over. It's done with. Um, yeah, it's week two. I really don't, you know, it's Eagles week two, Doug's week two. That's just what it is. The only unfortunate thing is if the Eagles were to lose this Detroit game, they're going to be one and two going to Green Bay on a short week. Yeah. While Dallas has Miami, they're three and zero. Then they go to New Orleans with a Drew Breesless Saints. That could put them at four and zero. They have such a cake first half schedule. That's something I would recommend all Eagles fans just calm your tits about we very well may see dallas go seven and one six and two but then we remember they're dallas so they are dallas Chill. so freaking relax um but the second half of their schedule isn't exactly forgiving whereas ours does get a little bit lighter yeah, we comparatively giants. we get the giants twice yeah we get miami on december 1st redskins again we get the redskins uh so it is so, like I said, we, we as their schedule increases in, in difficulty, ours decreases. Um, so, Al, we talked about it before we got on. You said, look, if they get through our first eight weeks, four and four, five and three, That's and just hang, we're, we're good. Like, Dallas is going to sit there and talk their mess, but play 500 or better, you're good. Wait until uh, See, Dallas fans shouldn't be talking until they actually play a, a real NFL team and not these Division Two scrubs. That <laughs> That's true. And they're playing a Division Three scrub this week. <laughs> Good lord. I'm, I'm pretty sure Clemson and Alabama play, Yeah, we play mine. them late, too. They might actually... Well, no, they won't be good. They're tanking for Tua. They should be tanking for anything. Unless... They should be tanking to get out of Miami. <laughs> unless they are going to tank two years in a row, they'll take like their be- best p- player... Like They'll take a Jerry Judy next year, and then the year after, take uh, Trevor Lawrence. Tank two years in a row. Probably not a terrible idea, although Trevor Lawrence doesn't look so hot this year. He's only he's still a sophomore though. Yeah. All right. So before Great we hair <laughs> sunshine. <laughs> That's sunshine. all I think about. Except he's right-handed. All uh, right. So <laughs> before we head out, we face each other in fantasy this week. Yeah, yeah. What am I like? One and eleven against you? Have you beaten me once? I think I beat you once. Oh, okay. Last year when you won your championship, you played me once and lost. And to lost me that once. once. That was and my only loss all year. <laughs> and then you didn't face me in the playoffs. You got lucky because I didn't make it. I, I did get lucky. Uh, yeah, so for all the listeners who remember from our first year together, me and LJ must have, like, I don't know, 15, 20 random bets throughout a year, and I think I've won, like, one. <laughs> it's not good. So he just just whooping that ass every single time out there against me. It's, I it's mean, you had a shot with this Kingery one. How many home runs does he have? Uh, I stopped 19, watching the Phillies, like, three, 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 like, a month and a half ago, so I don't know. Well, that's smart. Well, if tree falls in the forest and no one's around to see it. <laughs> So Kingery may not have any home runs. Um, you may win that bet too. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I see. I'm annoyed. Like I wanted to eke out a win against Connor, just because I wanted uh, the Browns defense to have like three touchdowns for me and Le'Veon to just be like, nah, I don't want to play anymore. And that didn't happen. So I lost again. And I was like, I wanted that like one and one momentum to carry me into this podcast. To, so you're into now. To yeah, to sit here and like. I don't know, appropriately trash talk, and now I'm just sitting here just, I w- so look, man, I'm beating my own ass. Like, I, I won, it's not good. and I wish I didn't win because I had Matt Ryan and Julio Jones <laughs> going oh, into God. Sunday night, and I was like, uh, kind See, of, I wish I would have lost. You're a good fantasy human, though, because at no point during that game was your emotion, God, 
Well, at least I get fantasy points. <laughs> no, I was it not. ain't. <laughs> My, the missus downstairs, she's sitting there bragging about her Cowboys and saying, thank God they're going up against Miami. D3 Miami. <laughs> and I'm like, no. You don't get to say that shit in this house. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I definitely did not. I was more pissed off that no, we lost you were the angry. game. I That's because you're a good human. That's <laughs> why Kelly Green Hour is great. <laughs> All right, so uh, sponsoring the, uh, the Kelly Green Hour this hour was Just Food Caterers. Serv- catering Services, excuse me. Treat yourself, take it home. Uh, I'm pretty sure that for the Eagles-Lions game this week, we're probably going to order some out. Damn right. Going to have some good food Shane's going to buy. I'm kidding. Um, if you <laughs> Is that the bet this week? <laughs> I'm kidding. Actually, I still owe you from Wings, so yeah, <laughs> so I am going to buy the just food this week. Um, uh, give them a call at 215-794-FOOD. That's 215-794-3663. Visit them at www.jfcatering.com. Go see our friend Rob. Uh, get some food. Tell him we sent you. Maybe he'll give you a deal. Who knows? Final thoughts, Shane? He'll definitely give you a deal. There you go. Um, yeah, just mention, uh, mention us and call him Asian Rob because it makes me laugh. <laughs> Um, he is Asian, by the way, so it makes sense. I'm not just saying that for any other reason. Um, but uh, no, man, my final thought is, look, it was really good jumping back on the mic with you here at uh, Kelly Green Hour. You guys actually talk football, and it's legit, and I enjoy it. I tried to, to mask some of my my language here. I think I only let two slip if I count appropriately. So Kelly Green Hour listeners, I'm sorry about that. Um, but uh, no, man, it was... I swear jars all full of shame. Yeah, well, we gave up on the swear jar because, well, I cured every disease known to man. So, um, <laughs> it's kind of hard. No, I'm kidding. I wasn't going to go there. Anymore. <laughs> um, but no, man. Seriously, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. It was it was good to uh, good to get back and actually talk some football. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming on. Uh, we're probably midway through the season. We'll have to do a collab show. Collab show. Kelly Green Hour. Chiefs talk. Uh, backyard beers and football. Yes, I remembered the name. Well done. Uh, get us all on and uh, do a little. Have a little fun there. Yeah, man. Agreed. But yeah. All right. That This has been the Kelly Green Hour. Thank you for listening. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, follow the Always Next Year podcast on Twitter at ANY Podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at LJ 54 Follow Shane on Twitter at Shane underscore Mead. No numbers? Boom. No Boom. numbers. Uh, follow, follow Connor at Connor10. That's Connor T-E-N. And as always, wherever you're listening to us, rate, review, let us know how we're doing, how we can improve the show. We're going to send it out to the Jack Dolls. Thank you for listening to the Kelly Green Hour here on the Always Next Year podcast. Beat me down and leave.